Well, let's see if we have another image of this handle here um, on the other side. Maybe I'll open this, and I think I've got this one right here. Yeah, so we can kind of see it from another angle. I think this would be really good to have on there. Um, it looks like it's on the right side of the gun, so let's come over here and work on it on this side. But it also has this kind of panel, this slide and panel here. There's a lot of detail here that I don't think we need, but what we can do is just put a plate on here, maybe with this groove in it, and then put the handle on that. So let's try that. What I'll do first is just select the gun and let's uh, find a place to put the cursor, maybe right in here, Shift S2. And then let's create a new cube with Shift A mesh cube. Um, let's take the size down to oh, 0 0.01. Let's try that. Oh, that's very small. <laughs> let's try uh, 0.1. Let's do that. There we go. Um, and then let's go ahead and take the face out of the back right here. We won't need that, so we can hit X and delete faces there. Let's scale this down a bit, move it in, scale it in the X, and let's place it right on here. There we go. And uh, it looks like it goes all the way down to that part down at the bottom. And then maybe we can bring it up, oh, I don't know, right about to here. Take this and bring it just about all the way back. And it looks like it goes up just beyond this bottom piece right here. So I'll grab this and move it forward to about right here. Um, it looks like it's got this kind of angled part, a bevel maybe here. But before I do that, I need to insert the edge loops for this groove because once I add a bevel to these edges, it will make this face an ingon. It won't be a quad anymore. And edge loops can only be inserted through quads. So if I'm going to insert some edge loops along here, I need to do it before I do the bevel. So I'm going to go ahead and press Control R and scroll the mouse wheel. And let's get two in here. And I'll kind of bring that down like that. And then let's add a couple of edge loops uh, vertically here. Maybe I'll take this one and move it kind of back to here. And this one I'll leave fairly far forward. It looks like the groove kind of stops here. I mean, the handle is part of that groove, I get that, but just the way it looks here, it looks like the groove ends there. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that face and insert it in just a bit like that and then let's go ahead and add those bevels i'll uh grab these edges here oops and let's then um, apply the scale with Control a in object mode and then we can press Control b and bevel those back like that and it looks to me like they lay a, a little bit flatter than that. Actually, let me insert a couple of edges here. What we can do is adjust this profile to get it to extend back a little bit farther. So I'll shift click in the um, profile field here. And if I drag that back like that, I can kind of angle it. You can see you can even turn it inside like that. But maybe I'll kind of angle it like that and maybe take the width and bring that back as well. Maybe something like this. There we go. All right. Now let's see if we can place that handle in there. And I think that handle, at least for this one here, looks a whole lot like the handles back here. So I think I'm going to cannibalize one of these and use it to create this handle. So I'll tab into edit mode and let's just uh, select this row of faces and alt shift click this row and then press control plus and move these this selection up like this so we get it all the way up to the top and then i've got to come in and deselect all of this i don't want all of that so i'm going to press alt z and then i'll press the c key and middle mouse button click and drag and deselect all of this stuff here and also all of this stuff down here let me get that right there. 
There we go. Now we can take this and duplicate it and move it off of here and split it out as its own object. So I'll press Shift D and I'll just hit Y to move it forward here. Now let's press the P key and separate it by selection. And then let's tab back into object mode and select that one. I'm going to move the origin back to the geometry, object set origin, origin to geometry. And then I need to fill these holes here. You see that? It's from that curved bracket. If we tab into edit mode and go to edge select, we can alt click these edges. And if I hit the F key to fill a face, it'll fill it all with one big ingon. So if I hit F, you can see there, it doesn't have any edges to match the rest of the object. So I'll undo that, Control Z. Now I can also press Alt F, and it will fill it, Alt F, but it will do it with tries, which isn't a bad thing. That's one way to go. But then, Control Z, you can also fill it with grid fill, and that you can come up here to face and grid fill, and that will fill it with quads. And that's what I want there. All right, let's do that same thing down here. Alt click. And let's use our face grid fill here. And there we go. All right. So we've got that. Let's turn it in the Y, RY90. And I think I'll probably want to shrink it down a bit. And let's move it out here and put it where we think it's going to go. I think it's going to go right about like this. And I feel like it's too long in the X. I'll press SX and kind of scale it in just a bit like that. Okay. So that's kind of where it's going to go, I think. Well, I better move it back a bit, maybe right into here. And maybe a little bit higher like that. Okay. And then I think I need to create a cylinder here to connect it with, and then be able to extrude off of that cylinder down into here. Let's give that a try, see if that works. So I will tab into edit mode, and I'm just going to select that one point there in the center something like that, and move the cursor with Shift-S2, and that's where that new cylinder is going to be. So Shift-A, Mesh, Cylinder. Um, let's take the cylinder down to 12 sides, and let's try, well, let's try 0.01 and 0.02. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then, well, we could leave it with an ingon. Let's do that. I'll uh, spin it in the Y, RY90. Scale it in the X with S and X, and let's move it back. Oh, something like this. I'm working on this piece right here. So I think maybe that's okay. Let's now grab this one face and let's inset it. I better apply the scale here. And then let's hit I and inset this like that. Let's then extrude it out, put it into there. And then let's delete that face, X, and delete faces. Okay, so we've got that there. Now we need to extrude it down. So if we tab into edit mode and select these faces here, now we can begin extruding this down to get this shape here. So I think all I need to do is just extrude and pull down in the Z. Then I'm going to scale in the Y like this. And then I will extrude down again in the Z and scale back out in the Y again like this, just to give it that kind of flare out. And then let's do that one more time down here and S and Y and scale that out like that. So yeah, we've just got that basic shape. I think that's all we need there. And then we probably need some sort of a cylinder in there to ground it to the rest of the gun. I feel like it needs to come up just a bit. Let me bring that up just a bit like that. And then let's uh, find a place in here. Let's just grab this edge and move the cursor to it. And then let's create a new cylinder. And with this, I will spin it around the Y, RY90. Let's scale it down. And let's uh, scale it in the X, bring it in there. And then I feel like there just needs to be one little thing out on the end here 
just to give it a little bit of visual interest so it isn't just a plain cylinder. And maybe I'll bring it up a bit too like this. So if we select this, maybe what we can do is uh, extrude and hit S and scale out, extrude and pull forward and then hit I and inset in, and then extrude forward like that. Just to give some sort of little detail there so it, it doesn't look quite as plain. Uh, I think that's probably pretty good. Let's now combine all of these. Let's take this and this and this and this, join it to the main gun. Let's shift click that, press control J and that will add that. Then with all that selected, I'm gonna go ahead and hit shade smooth and turn on auto smooth. And I think that's looking pretty good. We could probably scale up just or increase the degrees just a bit like that. Yeah, there you go. All right, so we've got that piece in there. I feel like that this piece right in here needs to be a little bit higher right in there. There we go. Okay, so we've got the handle. We should probably turn it a bit. It, it's a, a little bit too perfect straight up and down there. Let's uh, move the cursor to here. And then what let's do is just select this and this and this. And let's change our pivot point. I'll hit the period key and change to the 3D cursor. And now we can press R and X and kind of turn it one way or the other. I'll kind of turn it forward like that. I kind of like that. I feel like this could be a little bit smaller here on top. Let me hit the period key and go back to median point. Let me scale in the X, bring that in just a hair. Yeah, okay. And also we could add this. I'll select these two and press Control J and add that. Hit Shade Smooth. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let me drag forward just a bit like this. Did that ruin anything else? No, I think that's pretty good. All right, so we've got that handle on now. What let's do is work on this ammo box in the next video.